Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Cubic, Cortic and Reciprocal Graphs. Let's just quickly recap how we sketch a quadratic graph. If we had, say, y is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 2, then in our sketch we can work out the roots, the x-intercepts. That was so that y is 0, so if y is 0, we've got x plus 1 times x minus 2 is 0, so x would either be minus 1 or x would be equal to 2. And we can also work out the y-intercept. If x was equal to 0 when we're on the y-axis, then we get 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 2, which is minus 2. And now we can sketch it, so it's going to look like this. Now we can use a similar principle when we sketch cubics. So the general shape of a cubic is this. If we were to sketch y is equal to x cubed, it has this shape here, which you may be familiar from if you did, say, GCSE. Now a cubic basically has two turns. So it kind of turns right and then turns left. Or it might be vice versa. It might turn left first and then turn right. And this is a positive cubic. There's a positive number in front of the x cubed, and so it will be going uphill. If we had, say, y is equal to minus x cubed, or minus 2x cubed, say, then it would be a downhill shape, like a downhill roller coaster like that. So always look at the number in front of the x cubed to see whether it's a positive or a negative cubic. Just like here, we know this is going to be a positive quadratic, a smiley face shape, because the x squared term, the expansion, will be positive. So let's sketch some more of these. We've got b, y is equal to x times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now, let's think about where the roots are going to be, the x-intercepts. With y 0, then either x is 0, which is going to be here, or x plus 2 is 0, so we get minus 2, or x equals 1, which is here. We also want the y-intercept, if x was 0, to get the y-intercept, then 0 times 2 times minus 1 will just be 0, so it will go through that point. And then we use this general shape of the cubic. We know it's a kind of two-swerve shape, so it kind of swerves up and swerves down, and there we go. What about c? We've got y is equal to x squared x plus 1. Now this one's a bit more interesting. Because we have roots of 0 and minus 1. But notice that x is squared. That's almost like saying that the root of 0 occurs twice. So it kind of goes through the minus 1, it comes down, it goes through the 0, but then it goes through the 0 immediately again because that 0 is repeated. So in fact, it comes immediately back up. So what actually happens is that it touches at this root. And in general, whenever you have a repeated factor, as we call it, within your cubic equation, then your graph is going to touch at that root. Whereas here, because this factor is not repeated, the line just crosses at this root. What about d? We've got y equals x times x plus 1 squared. So it's very similar to before, except the squared is now on the x plus 1 rather than the x. Well, it's a positive cubic again, because if we were to expand this, we'd have... 1x cubed, that's a positive number, so it's going uphill. And it's a root at 0. And then there's repeated root, because we've got this squared factor here, at minus 1. So that means this time, as the curve comes up, it's going to touch the minus 1, because that's a repeated factor. And then comes down, and then it's going to cross the 0, because that's not a repeated factor. How about e? y is equal to 2 minus x times x plus 3 cubed times x plus 3 squared. Now, if y was 0, then either 2 minus x is 0, so x would have to be 2 to get that root, or if x plus 3 was 0, we get minus 3. Now, the one important thing to note here is that if we were to expand this out, we would have this minus x times this x times this x again, because that's squared, and that would be minus x cubed. So it's actually a negative cubic, which means it's going to come downhill. And then let's consider what happens at each of these two roots. Well, that's a repeated factor, so it's going to touch at this root of minus 3. And then it's going to come back down and cross at that 2, because that's not repeated. We also need this y-intercept, so if we make x 0, we have 2 minus 0, that's 2 times 3 squared, that's 18. So that y-intercept will be 18. 
How about f? We've got y is equal to x plus 2 cubed. Now we merely have one root here, that root of minus 2. But what happens to that minus 2? Well, if you have a triple repeated fact like that, you actually get a point of inflection on your graph. And notice it's a positive cubit, because if you expand this out, you would get positive x cubed. And the point of inflection looks like this. So it basically levels out at the minus 2. You get this kind of plateau and then coming back up. You'll notice this is the same kind of shape as when you sketch y equals x cubed, but it's just shifted left two. And we'll see when we do function transformations, so that's not surprising um, that that happens. We just need this y-intercept as well. If x is zero, then zero plus two cubed will be eight. So we get this point of inflection whenever we have a triple repeated factor. And by the way, in case you don't know what a point of inflection is, although I cover it in other videos, it's where the curve changes from turning right to turning left or vice versa. In this particular case, it's a stationary point of inflection because at that particular point, the curve is actually horizontal. And then finally, g, y is equal to 2 minus x cubed. Well, to get the root, we just make y 0. If 2 minus x is 0, then we get a root of 2. But if we were to expand this, then we get minus x cubed in the expansion. We'll have the minus x times the minus x times the minus x, minus x cubed. So it'll be a downhill cubic, and we get the point of inflection, this plateau, at the 2 there, and it will look like this. We also need this y-intercept. If x was 0, we again get 2 minus 0 cubed, which is 8. Now we're moving on to sketching cortex, where the highest power of this polynomial is 4. And, and just like we have negative and positive quadratics and negative positive cubics, we have negative and positive cortex as well. So if I have an equation of the form y equals ax to 4, so it's a cortex, plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e, and some of these values might be 0, so we might not have an x cubed term, for example, then if a is greater than 0, we have a positive cortex because the x to 4 term is positive, and the general shape will look like this. Whereas if we have a negative cortex because the x to 4 term is negative, then it's kind of upside down. And that's very similar to with quadratics. If we have a positive quadratic, it's a smiley face shape, and if it's a negative quadratic, it's a frowny face shape, except for we've got this extra bump. And, and in fact, the number of turns in your graph, so you can see there's a turn there, a turn there, and a turn there, is one less than the highest power of your polynomial. So that means with a quadratic, whose highest power is 2, there's one turn. With a cubic, whose highest power is 3, there's two turns. And with a quartic, whose highest power is 4, there's three turns. One, two, three turns. One, two, three turns. And the principles here are exactly the same as for sketching cortex, so let's dive right into the questions. We've got x times x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 3. We have roots at 0, minus 1, positive 2, and negative 3. And it's going to be a positive cortex because we have x times x times x times x is 1x to the 4, that's a positive number, 1. So it's going to look like this. And there's no repeated factors, so it's just going to cross at each of these four roots. So it's going to come down, cross, cross, and cross, and come back up like that. What about b? y is equal to x plus 1 squared times x minus 3 squared. Now we have some repeated factors here, so there's going to be some touching of the x-axis. We have a root at minus 1 and a root at 3, and it's going to be a positive cortic again, because x times x times x times x is 1x to the 4. And because it's a repeated factor, it's going to touch the minus 1. And then because that's a repeated factor as well, it's going to touch the 3 and come up back like this. We also need the y-intercept, so if x was 0, we have 1 squared times minus 3 squared, which is going to be 9. And then the final cortic here, y is equal to 3 minus x times x plus 1 cubed. Now first note that it's going to be a negative quartic because we have minus x times x times x times x. That's minus 1x to the 4. So it's a negative quartic, so it's going to look like this. And then we're going to have roots at 3 because if 3 minus x is 0, we get 3. 
and a root at minus one. So because it's a negative quartic, it's gonna come up. Now notice this is a triple repeated factor. So do you remember we get a point of inflection at that point? So if I start a bit further across, we get a point of inflection at the minus one, then it's still gonna go up. And then because that's not repeated at all, it's just gonna cross the three. So we get a shape like that. And notice there is still three turns. It turns right, then turns left, and then turns right. That's three turns as we expect. And then finally, a bit of sketching of reciprocal graphs. Now a standard reciprocal graph, as we see in A, will look like this. So when we have y equals one over x, the sketch will look like this. You can easily see this shape by just trying a few different values of x, working out the y, and then plotting those values. There's a few key features here. Can you notice that x is not allowed to be zero? If you did one over zero, then that's kind of plus or minus infinity. We don't like that. So therefore, this expression is not defined when x equals zero. And what we actually end up with is something called an asymptote. Now, we wouldn't usually draw it if the asymptote was coinciding with the axis, in this case, the y-axis. But we'd usually draw it as a dotted line. And we'd usually write the equation of that asymptote on here. In this case, it's x equals zero, or we can just describe it as the y-axis. And basically, an asymptote is just a line that the curve approaches at infinity. An asymptote is usually a straight line, but it's not necessarily a straight line. So you can see that this curve will gradually get closer and closer to this straight line here as you kind of tend towards positive infinity in the y direction. So that's what an asymptote is. There's also another asymptote. Can you see that this line here will approach the x-axis? So this has the equation y equals zero, and that is going to be an asymptote also. Let's sketch the other ones. We've got y is equal to two over x plus three. Now, we're going to explore these a bit more when we do graph transformations, but for the moment, just kind of think about this. We're not allowed to divide by zero, are we? We can't divide by zero, and that will happen when x is minus three, because minus three plus three would be zero. And therefore, just like we've got this vertical asymptote here, we're going to get a vertical asymptote when x is equal to minus three. So let's draw that in there, a dotted line, x is equal to minus three. And this two here doesn't really have much effect on the graph in terms of the shape of the sketch. It just times the y values by two. Um, so it's going to stretch it like that, but it's otherwise going to look the same. The shape's going to be the same. So now we can draw something very similar to this, except for instead of starting from here, we're going to start here at the asymptote. So it's going to look like that. Now there's one thing missing from our sketch, and it's the y-intercept. There's no x-intercepts, but there is that y-intercept. Now if x was zero to get the y-intercept, we have two over zero plus three, which is two-thirds. So therefore, that y-intercept is two-thirds. Now we're gonna do this graph and then one extra one after this I hadn't wrote in here. y is equal to minus one over x plus three. Now we know that a one over x graph looks like this. So minus one over x kind of flips it upside down and we're gonna get a graph that looks like this. And then we've got to add three to the y values. So we'll see this more when we do graph transformations, but that's gonna shift the whole thing up three. And that means this horizontal asymptote is gonna shift from y equals zero to y equals three. And then we just draw the rest of the graph in as before. Now we need to work out this x-intercept, so we just need to make y zero. So if y is zero, we get zero is minus one over x plus three add one over x to both sides, and reciprocate both sides, we get x is equal to a third. So there we go, that is the x-intercept here. Now I'm gonna do one harder one of this. I'm gonna say that y is two x plus one over x minus three. This is still a reciprocal graph, but a more complicated one, where we've got x at the top and the bottom, and this is how you do it. Firstly, note that x is not allowed to be three because we would have three minus three, which is zero. We're not allowed to divide by zero. So we get this vertical asymptote of x equals three. Now let's consider also what happens when x is really big. So if we were to just substitute a large number into our calculator, let's just say that x was a thousand, then the numerator would be two times a thousand plus one, so 2001 over, 1,000 minus 3, which is 997, 
and that gives us 2.00702, a number that's just slightly more than 2. So basically the curve is approaching a y value of 2. So I'm going to draw in an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. And then because both these x terms are positive, it's going to look like a normal reciprocal graph like this. So just to recap, to get the vertical asymptote, you just choose a value of x that gives you a division by 0. And to get the horizontal asymptote, you just choose a really big value for x and substitute it in. The other way of seeing it is that if x was really big, then this plus 1 and minus 3 effectively become inconsequential. So if you ignore those, you get 2x over x, which simplifies to 2. So y will be equal to 2 when x is really large, as we can see here. Now we need these intercepts here. So if we make x 0, that gives us y is equal to 1 over minus 3, which is minus a third. So in fact, I got this slightly wrong. I should have really checked this first. The y-intercept is minus third. It'll be down here. So it's going to go down like this, in fact. And then if y is 0 to get the x-intercept, we get 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 is equal to 0, if y is 0. And then timesing 3 by x minus 3, we get 2x plus 1 equals 0. And so x is equal to minus half. So let's put that x-intercept of minus half on here. And we are done. So we can use this principle whenever we have equations of the form y equals ax plus b over cx plus d.